The LG G4 has been out and about in several markets. It comes with a great display, excellent cameras, good enough build quality. But should you get this over the Samsung Galaxy S6, HTC One M9 or even the iPhone 6 Plus? Let's find out. Welcome to our review of the LG G4. This is Abhinav and I've been using this phone for about a month or so and actually performs really well. It's powered by the Hexacore Snapdragon 808 instead of the Snapdragon 810. Heating issues with the Snapdragon 810 might have prompted LG to use the Hexacore 808. You have a 5.5 inch Quad HD Quantum IPS display which increases contrast, better color reproduction and it's brighter as well. Animations are slick, performance is really great here. You have 3 gigs of RAM on the device as well. We'll talk about the rest of the specs as we go along. Coming to the build, you just have a space to open the back cover on the right for metal trim around the device. Yes, this phone is made out of plastic. At the top, you have the infrared blaster, secondary noise cancellation mic. On the left of the device, you can see there's absolutely nothing. Moving to the bottom, you have the audio jack, primary microphone and the micro USB data syncing and charging port. Now this plastic Chrome sort of trim is one thing I really don't like about the device. Apart from that, construction is pretty solid. Moving to the back, you have a 16 megapixel camera with optical image stabilization, laser autofocus, a very bright LED flash, and a color spectrum sensor for better white balance. And you can see those rear mounted volume rockers. They have excellent tactile finish. The power button is raised slightly, so you always know which button you are pressing. Moreover, your finger generally rests on these buttons. Sadly, the speakerphone is located at the back, my least favorite position for a speakerphone. It should have been either at the bottom, front is always the best. And you can see this back cover, it has sort of a diamond shaped pattern. It is made to look like metal, but again, it is made out of plastic. So the entire construction is plastic. It doesn't feel cheap, but when even Samsung has moved to premium materials, LG could have done better. Now you have NFC baked into the smartphone as well. You can get a different cover with wireless charging too. It's not baked into the smartphone itself. Now this is a single SIM international variant. It supports 4G LTE as well. You can get the dual SIM variant in India. You can expand storage up to two terabytes and you have a removable 3000 milliamp hour battery. Something that is not available on any of the flagships this time around. You have an eight megapixel front facing camera. You can see the notification LED right there. Proximity and light sensors along with the main earpiece right there as well. You have on-screen buttons and you can customize it with some pre-configured options. Now let's talk about this display. You have 5.5 inch Quad HD Quantum IPS panel over here. It has excellent color reproduction. Great color gamut, color saturation levels also look good over here. It's plenty bright and visible outdoors too. Viewing angles are wide, no distortion in brightness or colors. Now it's slightly curved and that doesn't cause any distortion in brightness, colors or the content that you are watching. Coming to network and call quality, you really expect flagship phones to perform well under any conditions and the LG G4 doesn't disappoint. Call quality is excellent, you have noise suppression built in, you can use voice clarity as well. You have a quick memo feature available too, so you can go ahead and write some note while you are talking to somebody else. Now being a flagship device again, lots of connectivity options including Miracast, NFC, USB Wi-Fi and Bluetooth tethering also work well. And as I said, it does have an infrared blaster. It was very easy to set up with my set-top box and television and it did work quite fine. GPS is also available on the device. I used it to navigate throughout the city and it never let me down. Navigation was really quick on the device. Now coming to the cameras, you have a 16 megapixel rear camera with optical image stabilization, f1.8 aperture. You can capture raw images in manual mode as well. 4K videos can also be captured over here. Laser autofocus really works well. It's quite fast and focusing. Moreover, you have a complete manual control over the image you want to take, including ISO, white balance, manual focus is also available over here. We have a separate in-depth camera review with several image and video samples, including a test of optical image stabilization. Now, both the rear and front facing cameras take great images, whether it's inside, outside, and macro shots have that great bokeh effect that you get with DSLR cameras. Now, music quality is very good on the device, be it through the headphone jack or even the speakerphone. It's quite loud, it's clear, isn't tinny, and doesn't get muffled that easily due to the curved back. FM radio is also supported, it is able to find channels very quickly. 
Now we are playing a 4K video and the display looks really amazing. It's color rich, great saturation and it's plenty bright. There are no issues with performance, no lag whatsoever in playing videos, no frame rate issues either. Now we are playing this video over YouTube. Streaming video also works fine, didn't notice any stutter anywhere. Now coming to software, the LG G4 runs Android 5.1 Lollipop right out of the box. Not much bloatware over here. You can go ahead and hide your apps. You can go ahead and uninstall apps very easily. So lots of customization is baked into the launcher itself. There are some themes available as well. You can go ahead and add more home screens. You can go ahead and add apps, widgets, change wallpapers directly from within the interface itself by just long tapping. It's very easy to use, quite a lot of customization. Then you have smart bulletin baked in. You can see how many steps you have walked, music, smart settings, your remote controls, and there's some tips available too on how to use your smartphone. Now you have a notification toggles right up top. You can scroll through the entire list. You can edit these, just have the ones that you like up top. Then you have one touch color inversion. So people with weak eyesight can use this high contrast mode as well. You have multiple user support baked in. You also have priority interruptions, but yes, they have been worked around. So you have to tap on the icon instead of just using the volume rocker. You can see right here, Android 5.1 Lollipop. Performance is smooth on the device. Now, if we come to storage, out of that 32 gigs, you have about 22 gigs available right out of the box. You can add an extra micro SD card up to two terabytes. Moreover, apps are movable to the external SD card, even though app data is not. USB OTG is also supported, and you can see plenty of RAM is free, even though we are running so many apps in the background. Now, I did find smart settings quite useful. It turned on my Wi-Fi when I got home, switched off Bluetooth, which I was using in my car, and saved me from fidgeting around in the settings. Dual window was something I really found useful again. So while I was browsing through articles, I could look up videos relating to the same text. It actually worked out quite well. No performance issues there. And as I said earlier, you can go ahead and customize the soft touch buttons at the bottom and you can add some of the pre-configured options, including quick slide. Now, LG's Q slide apps are still here. You can go ahead and add these, but I really didn't find much use for them. Dual window actually worked better for me. Now, when you get the device, the settings are divided into these categories. You have several tabs available. Instead, just switch to the list view. It's simply more usable, but I would have liked the option to search for settings as well. Web browsing is very smooth on this device. Pinch to zoom is excellent. Images and text render very quickly. Apps do open up very quickly on the device as well. You really can't tell whether this is running the Snapdragon 810, Snapdragon 808. It's just simply superb you can also launch the camera very quickly by just double tapping on the volume down button and there you see overall performance is stupendous on the device multitasking is great as well apps don't get killed that quickly garbage collection remains dormant until there's just not enough ram now battery life is a bit erratic on the device some days i was able to get through one and a half days of heavy usage some days even two, but most of the time you can get through one and a half days of very heavy usage on this device. Now the LG G4 plays games quite well too. You can see that in our gaming review. We have separate features video as well, so you can go ahead and have a look at that as well. The phone didn't heat up in gaming. There were no frame rate issues, no lag whatsoever in even the higher end games. Well folks, it's now time for a wrap up. The best thing about the LG G4 is its rare camera. It takes excellent images. Optical image stabilization really works over here as well. The rear mounted buttons might take some time getting used to, but after that, it just becomes second nature. The next best thing is the display. It looks good. It has great color reproduction, videos, movies, everything look great on it. Yes, I would have liked the build quality to be a bit better. It is a flagship device of 2015 where even Samsung has moved to more premium materials like glass and metal. But unlike the rest of the flagships, LG has made a practical smartphone. The curve in the front protects the display in case of a frontal impact. The back cover is removable, as is the battery, so you can simply swap in a new charged battery. Storage is also expandable on the device. Moreover, you can go ahead and swap those back covers for leather ones or one with wireless charging built in. But even if these features weren't there, the LG G4 has excellent cameras, 
a brilliant display and great performance, even though it might not look as pretty as the Galaxy S6. We'll be back with more. Don't forget to hit that subscribe and like button. Thanks for watching this video and as always, have a great day.